Uh, my name is Professor Nancy Campbell, and I'm the department head in uh, the Department of Science and Technology Studies, which at Rensselaer is a very special uh, place. It is an interdisciplinary place. It is a place uh, that will help you become a much more well-rounded student. And um, it is a place that opens doors to meaningful careers. And right now, we're all searching for meaning in our lives. And so let me tell you just a little bit about myself before and my co-presenter um, before we launch into um, our uh, uh, webinar on what the science, technology, um, and society major at Rensselaer really looks like. So myself, I'm a historian. I'm a historian of science, medicine, and technology. I particularly study the opioid epidemic. Um, in fact, I write the history of science and medicine, drug treatment, and drug policy, uh, largely in the United States, although my recent book is also uh, about Scotland and England. So it's called OD, and it's about the opioid epidemic in Scotland and England. And I bring that to you, not just so that you get a sense of who I am and who we are here at Rensselaer, uh, but because that's a pretty interdisciplinary topic. In other words, if you wanted to know something about opioid overdose, you would want to know something about the social, the political, and the cultural aspects of why it is that we in the United States use opioids at such high levels and why it is that we have historically used opioids at such high levels. So that's the kind of thing that we study in STS. Um, it's a way to look at broader questions and with a very interdisciplinary knowledge and skill set. So we are interested uh, in having you come to study with us. And now I would also like my co-presenter, um, Professor Lawrence Howard, to go ahead and introduce himself. So uh, good day, as Nancy said, we don't know where everyone is time zone wise, but hello everybody. And uh, my name is Lawrence Howard. I uh, have been, I guess, with STS department about eight years now on and off. It just seems like just yesterday. Uh, I am, uh, in addition to uh, teaching uh, in the SDS department, I am a practicing attorney here in the Capital District. Uh, and, and that is, um, I do a lot of different things. I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but um, but I uh, would be happy to ask questions and how it might relate to my teaching, you know, a little further on in the presentation. So I'm going to disappear, but Nancy can bring me back anytime she wants, but I'm here listening and watching. And so I just wanted to say hello. And uh, just because I disappear doesn't mean I'm not keeping uh, tabs on what's happening. And of course, I can always chat also in that little box but we'll be back and forth. So I'm gonna say hello and goodbye just for a minute and I'm gonna hand it back over to Nancy and uh, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so now you've heard a lot about us and you will have a chance to ask some questions a little later in the presentation, uh, but we now wanna talk a little bit about you and what kind of a student you might be um, that you are interested in the science, technology, and society program. Uh, you might be interested as a standalone major, um, a minor, or um, an integrated pathway, or you might be interested as a dual major. We um, designed STS in order to uh, appeal to students who have the kinds of qualities that are listed on the slide. So if you're that kind of person who is uh, kind of curious about everything, um, kind of curious about how things fit together, if you have a concern and an interest in social justice and you feel like you have um, a conscience that you you want to bring to bear on your own um, major, on your own research area, um, and if you're seeking that kind of well-rounded education that you might get at a liberal arts school or program, and you want to combine that with a technical, uh, maybe a computer science major, um, or maybe an engineering major, we are definitely interested in you. Uh, you will tend to be the kind of student who can handle um, the integration of knowledge across disciplines. And you tend to be somebody who would be seeking a well-rounded education. Uh, as you'll learn, we are 
also the one program really at our uh, Rensselaer that does a lot of work on public policy, on law and policy, and the way in which law and policy shape all of our lives. And so we're very interested in um, people who want to make an impact on our technological future. And um, if you are that kind of person, right, who want to make sense of problems at a, at a broader level or at a meta level, uh, we are the kind of people who try to teach you how to look um, at multiple dimensions of all of the kinds of problems that we have. And so if you're somebody who finds um, technical, uh, technological dimensions just a little too narrow, and you want to practice thinking that stretches or expands your horizon, then STS is the program for you. So uh, I gave you the example earlier about my own work on opioid, uh, which is of course both legal and illegal, licit and illicit, drug use and overdose. But I also have colleagues uh, who you'll hear a little bit about later who study uh, maybe the effects and impacts of mining, or the ways in which food and water, the nexus between food, water, and energy work, um, the social impacts of all kinds of technologies. These are big picture issues of our times. And so we are interested in uh, people like yourselves who have that kind of burning interest to really be involved in their world and really be immersed in their studies. We are all passionate about our research. We bring that passion into the classroom. And now I wanna introduce you to one of our students, one of our alums actually. Uh, Samran Ali is now at George Washington University Law School. In, in Washington, D.C., and uh, she is someone who, when I think about, all right, so what is an STS major? Samron's picture and Samron uh, kind of comes to mind. I, you know, I remember her running by my office, and she was always running, and uh, she uh, chose to major in um, STS alone as a standalone major, and she also stayed for what is called a co-terminal degree or a fifth year um, in STS. And so she wrote a senior thesis uh, for her undergraduate, and then a year later wrote another one um, for her master's degree, and I was her advisor. And so I bring Samron to you because I feel like she's the kind of person who was truly always interested in issues of social justice, but she was also always looking. Uh, she's a very practical-minded student, and so she's always looking for a way uh, to begin to ask different kinds of questions. So she was intellectually curious in exactly the way that the first slides introduced you to. And she has this great quote where she says, I focused a lot more before I came to STS on finding the right answer. And as I often say in my own classes, and then I'm gonna have Professor Howard talk about his as well. Um, so that's your cue, Tig. Um, the right answer rather than the right question. So we teach students uh, to really reframe their questions and to really ask them in a, what we call researchable way. So we want you to be able to do practical, real world oriented research. All right, so Tig, I'm gonna say goodbye for a second. All right, thank, thank you, Nancy. The uh, the uh, Professor Campbell talked a little bit about what science and technology studies is, and I'm I'm actually not the best one to answer that in the deepest way. But some of the things she said, and some of the other things that uh, we're talking about today, are really important because no matter how interested in technology you are, we are asking the questions of how technology impacts society and and where technology uh, is going and whether the uh, impacts are positive or negative or whether the consequences are intended or unintended. And that's a lot of the same discussion that happens, at least in all of my classes related to the law. Um, people seem to think that law is very simple and it's very black and white. It's complicated. Uh, yeah, people know that. But people seem to think that there's always an answer. And that goes back to the last slide we were just looking at. Um, there isn't always a right answer. In fact, often the answer is not simple and it's shades of gray. 
uh, and and what what um, you know what what that our student was talking about was it's it's really not the right answer. It's the right question, and to continue to find those different questions. And so our um, so you go back to the next you know back to the next slide, Nancy. So our curriculum is organized in a way where we really try to take advantage of of those creating those tools that are in that toolbox. So, so how do we ask the right questions? What questions are there? What types of issues are there? We look at problems and we try and look at all of the angles. Uh, science technology studies is one of the most um, a multidisciplinary majors you can find. And as uh, you know, as we're gonna remind you a couple of times, whether you wanna just, uh, major only in STS or actually work with it as a dual major, it, it adds a lot of value to um, your other studies because no matter how uh, technologically minded you might be, uh, the, the notion of how those technologies work with and impact society is what we do. So we've also got a lot of experiential opportunities. Uh, I teach the uh, public service, I guess we're changing the name to public service practicum course. Uh, where we have internships off campus, uh, where you get to do some experiential learning, where you actually work in public service um, as an intern in public service opportunities. And we also have um, are creating a new program that'll be in place for you guys that's going to focus on preparing you for the arch and uh, to take advantage of your, your semester away and to make sure that you find something really important and interesting to do with that time. And then we've got a uh, post-ARCH program uh, class that's also required for our majors or will be by the time you arrive, assuming you arrive, and that it works to help students figure out how to then take that ARCH experience or what you've learned from that experience and find the right career um, going forward. And we also have uh, senior projects that are year long where people really get to focus in on um, what's most important uh, to them. And I, I'm going to actually ask uh, Professor Campbell to come back and talk a little bit more about the senior projects and hand it back to her at this time. Thanks, Professor Howard. Uh, so now we've got um, senior projects are pretty interesting because students conceptualize those by themselves, but with the help of a faculty advisor. So I have people right now working on senior projects. I have one who's doing um, a history of the involvement of African-American women in um, community health. One is doing a senior project on uh, uh, medical organizations, kind of like Doctors Without Borders, um, that do medical mission trips in international countries, and what kind of law and policy frameworks are they? Do they function under? And uh, one one is working on um, what's called polyamory, which is uh, con uh, consensual non-monogamy. And so all of them are, and of course it's COVID nineteen, right? Uh, while they're finishing their senior projects, they're working on um, how they can conduct them be, when they can no longer do face-to-face -face interviews or archival research. And so um, if you look at this list of what STS majors learn to do, you'll see that we, we do try to really uh, prepare our students um, to be very versatile and to approach uh, research topics, first of all, to generate research topics um, that are original. So we want our students leaving our program with a, a substantial chunk of uh, self-generated research under their belt. And so we want them to be able to integrate cultural, ethical, historical, legal, political, and social angles into everything they do. Now, something like my own research topic, it's pretty easy to see how you can approach the topic of opioid uh, use, abuse, and overdose from many different angles. But we also really teach our, our students that 
that they need to be able to situate any kind of technological innovation, any kind of scientific study, right, into um, the both historical and different cultural contexts than our own. And so we are trying to teach them to, uh, of course, to communicate effectively what they find, but also to recognize that there are many things in our world that are um, that are shaping uh, the questions that can be asked and how they can be asked and how data can be analyzed and collected, et cetera. And so we are very interested and we're always thinking about uh, teaching our students how to argue well, how to back up their arguments with evidence, how to um, judge that evidence, how to evaluate whether and how that evidence was gathered, and basically um, to think all the time about how are these knowledge claims being produced, who is producing them, why are they doing so, and um, how are they being mobilized right within the public sphere. So we are very interested in teaching our students um, how to function in the real world. And right now, of course, all of our real worlds are kind of four walls. We're in the midst of epidemic, but I feel like my students, so right now I'm teaching a course called Drugs in History, and I feel like my students, um, uh, now I did have uh, half a semester in the classroom uh, with those students, and now we have had half, almost half a semester outside of the classroom. And yet I think that they really are engaged still with the kinds of questions that we were talking about in the classroom. Now we, of course, uh, because drug epidemics often follow an epidemic model, not unlike what we're all living through right now, uh, we, we have um, a toolbox and a set of terms and a set of concepts um, that can be applied really to any epidemic. And so we're, we're um, fortunate in that, in that, I mean, not that we're fortunate, but we are fortunate as a class that we are talking specifically about things that really matter to everyone right now. So, but that is an extreme example in a way of what our student culture is like all the time. So our culture in STS, uh, we have a very vibrant graduate program as well as vibrant faculty that we will be introducing you to soon. Um, and um, that vibrancy, is uh, carries for our students over into their extracurricular activities, their clubs. Um, this club reset, which is written about on the slide, just came about through student interest, but STS faculty have really worked hard with that group in order to pull off a career fair, an alternative career fair called Job Fest, which we held for the first time this spring, right before COVID-19 sent us all back home. Um, and and, but but that's the kind of students we we typically have, right? So if you look at the student quote on that slide, right, our students are very um, prepared for life beyond Rensselaer. That's kind of what um, what they were really uh, doing. So many of our students are involved with RPI Ambulance um, or Habitat for Humanity or Reset or many of our sustainability focused uh, clubs. There are many clubs and task forces on campus where P uh, students are asking our kinds of questions, right? There are the complex questions about, about our world. Now, I um, want to introduce you to some of those students. These are all students who have written senior projects recently, and uh, you can get a sense of the kinds of topics that they find interesting. And um, you can also see uh, we are extremely inclusive um, as an educational environment. We are uh, very interested in um, making sure that here on a technologically based university uh, campus that we uh, value and respect and include diverse perspectives. Um, but we are also very debate oriented, right? So within our classrooms, there's constant questions. There's lots of debate. Uh, you always can tell an STS classroom because it's the people who are discussing um, uh, we, we, we constantly teach our students uh, to enter into environments where all kinds of hard discussions often are going on. 
Uh, that is in part because we have an amazing faculty. Our faculty come from, so, so you have to understand, right, that our faculty come from so many different disciplines that um, we are, we are by no means um, a unified disciplinary kind of department, right? We have sociologists and anthropologists. Um, on this slide, uh, Professor Jennifer Cardinal is an anthropologist who um, teaches in our many of our sustainability-related courses. And I believe she's also teaching senior project uh, this semester. You see me, you've already heard enough about me. Um, and you see Professor Akira. Oh, I should say I've been at Rensselaer for exactly 20 years. I came in the fall of 2000. Um, and so I'm celebrating my 20th year on campus. And um, my my colleague, um, Professor Akira, uh, has all, has been here longer than I have. And uh, Professor Akira is a historian of technology, uh, but he specializes um, in engineering education. Tig, you're on this one. Here you go, Professor Howard. I'm going to come back. Uh, I'm going to come back and, uh, you know, I'm going to... Uh, to say, uh, I, I don't think I could do Professor Kinchy justice, but to say, I'll just leave it at, she is at the cutting edge of um, citizen science, having just published that book. And that comes after a long um, career already of, of a lot of, of really fantastic research um, in how communities address issues and social justice issues related to agriculture related now you know her focus um, is, is on citizen science and also on water she's working with a postdoc right now and that's that's you know you can find out a lot about a lot more about her and you can actually talk to her I'm sure if you wanted to um, Brandon on my left there is is a uh, is a is a professor in our department who, his interests are as diverse as STS. He's actually a graduate from our program, uh, PhD right here from uh, homegrown in, in Troy, both uh, family and, and education. Uh, but that's not to say that his uh, interests are at all colloquial. Uh, they range, um, you know, as you can see there, but the public policy related to, to communication, to, to data, to how the world works. Um, let me talk a little bit more about me since I'm qualified to do that just for a minute. Uh, at RPI, or really within the STS department, I'm our pre-law advisor, although I'm available to other majors if they're interested in talking about going to law school. Um, I uh, was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time when RPI was working on developing a collaboration with Brooklyn Law School, which is where I graduated from. And so I'm the faculty, um, no, I'm the academic coordinator for the Brooklyn Law School collaboration. And I just have to say the hour before we um, got online with you guys, I was looking at legal tech startup pitches as part of the Innovators in, uh, Invitational hosted by Brooklyn Law School, where teams of law students are looking for often technology computer scientists to put together real startups. They're competing for $10,000 prize and I'm one of the judges and, and we've got people from all over the patent world, all over the uh, legal tech world and the uh, all over the startup world to um, judge these applications. And I've been lucky enough to do that for the last couple of years uh, due to our relationship with Brooklyn Law School. And the last little bit about that is that uh, we, also have a 3-3 program uh, with Albany Law School, and I believe we'll soon have one with Brooklyn Law School, where you can actually get your undergraduate degree if you're majoring in science and technology studies and your law degree in six years instead of seven. So there's actually a whole webinar coming up, an information session hosted by Albany Law School uh, on um, April 28th at 7 p.m. 7 30 p.m. 7 p.m. hang on a second uh it's 7 p.m. and uh if you want we will get out well actually you'll be invited if you're on this list so uh if you're interested in the notion of completing your undergraduate work or 
in three years and then shifting into law school, uh, saving a year of your um, time. If you're committed to being an attorney, that's something that you might want to tune in on and uh, uh, we can fill you in a lot more on the 28th about that. And I can certainly ask some questions today, but I don't want to go too far um, along that line along that line right now, except, uh, no, I'm not going to go any further. I think I'm able to move these slides, so I'm going to do it, uh, Nancy, with just a couple of us there. Um, I, I'm just going to say a quick sentence about each of these folks there. and, and um, you know, Professor Malazita is is a uh, is is in both our department and the games um, design department, and uh, he is uh, a fantastic professor who has a history of coding. Actually, before he became a professor, before he joined uh, the academic ranks, and uh, he is uh, one of uh, among. Uh, the many really, really well loved professors here in the department. I, we we actually pride ourselves in the SDS department of having strong relationships with our students that we build from those extensive discussions we have during class. Um, and uh, Professor Schaefer on on um, uh, sorry Jara next on that slide um, is a uh, actually is responsible for a lot of the DIS uh, program uh, teaching that we do. She's a designer by training, I think by profession as well. Uh, and she brings a uh, the design thought process, which a lot of us do, but she's, she's um, one of the leaders in that area, bringing design right into the classroom in, in all of the work that she does. And we're not gonna talk a lot about DIS. I think there was a different, webinar on that uh, today, but she's also one of the uh, most important faculty in that department. Uh, Guy Schaefer, um, you know, consistent with a lot of our thinking in the SDS department is it looks on um, grassroots science and uh, sustainability and, and feminist STS, which is really um, something you'll learn about when you come to, uh, to come to RPI um, to uh, to work with uh, all of these guys. Nancy, I'm gonna let you talk about the rest of these folks on this last slide real quick. So if you wanna come back and join us. Hi, yeah. yeah. So um, these last few faculty, this is our last faculty slide. And again, I mean, this gives you a sense of how um, diverse <laughs> and uh, we, we really are as a, as a group. So we have um, Professor Sahasky is a historian um, who writes about the history of IQ tests, uh, intelligence testing. Um, Professor Tatsi is also a historian uh, and but he writes about uh, the history of open source software. Uh, so he has a book called For Fun and Profit, A History of Free and Open Source Software. Um, and he's also writing now a book about the history of decentralization. Uh, so uh, um, Raquel Velio is a sociologist uh, who has an STS doctorate um, from the University College of London. And uh, she studies disability um, and STS and the way in which um, marginalized communities themselves, users of these technologies reshape how they are, um, how they are used, made, um, and the effects and impacts that they have on society. And uh, she also, like Professor Mesh, uh, teaches in the Design, Innovation, and Society program, DIS. Our department offers three majors. We have three degrees. One is Science, Technology, and Society, about which today's webinar is. And the other is Sustainability Studies. And um, our largest by far is Design, Innovation, and Society, which is made to dual, especially with mechanical engineering, but also with any engineering uh, degree at RPI. And then lastly, um, but not leastly, uh, we have Langdon Winner. Professor Winner is a distinguished um, political scientist who all his career has studied. Uh, he wrote an amazing book back in 1977 called Autonomous Technology um, that was ahead of its time. And um, he has also recently had um, a, an, an anniversary edition of his amazing 
and very impactful book, uh, The Whale and the Reactor, A Search for Limits in an Age of High Tech. And so those are our faculty. We wanted to introduce you to uh, them. And we also wanted to say something about our alums. Our alums, if we put our alums up and talked about them in the ways that we did with our faculty, we wanted you to have a sense of who you would meet when you're on campus with us. Uh, let us all hope that that um, will be soon. And um, we also have our alums who go, who, who are similarly amazing uh, similarly diverse, and who really have gone in a wide variety of directions. I wanted to introduce you to one of them, um, uh, Maggie uh, Colather, um, who was a dual bio STS major, and she's currently getting her master's of public health. She's out in St. Louis doing that, um, but she has also, uh, she works on um, something called Team Rubicon, which is a an amazing disaster response team. And she also was in RPI Ambulance when she was here. She's extremely well trained to respond to uh, disasters, public health disasters. She's involved with, of course, our current response to COVID-19. And uh, she credits STS with really preparing her uh, for doing the kind of work uh, that she does. She spent years working in occupational health for Amazon and only left that to go to graduate school this fall. All right, so now that kind of brings us uh, to the end of what we had prepared for you. And now we're interested in what you have prepared for us. Um, and so I'm going to introduce Melissa Johnson, who's going to moderate um, a question and answer period. And so I hope you will all.